Hey guys, it's Chad. And Claire. This is CJ's Vinyl, and this is our follow-up video to the LP60 stress test and our final thoughts regarding that turntable. Yep. So, one of the first things that I want to just jump right into is we had a few different comments that came through asking about the record and specifying that they thought that it was made of polystyrene. And um, this is important to clear up because uh, we don't want people to get the wrong impression of what we're doing here. And so I can go ahead and tell you right now that according to Vinyl Engine's website, the polystyrene records have a square edge to the label, and this one was rounded off, which indicates a vinyl pressing. And the same is also said for the rough edges around the disc versus a smoother rounded off edge, which indicates a vinyl pressing instead of the polystyrene. This Queen album has the smoother rounded edges that you can see here in these photos and has the polished edges around the record and styrene is non-polished. And so those are clear indicators yeah. that this record that we used is a vinyl pressing. So I wanted to make sure that I cleared that up. Um, when we do these type of projects or when we do this kind of, um, any of these, uh, videos that we make, we try to be as thorough as we can. Yeah. And so with the LP60, we made sure that we replaced the stylus because on April 15th, I had a video that I created that basically just showed how I replaced the ATN 3600L, which is also a conical stylus. So we had brand new record replacement stylus and the record is in fact a vinyl right. pressing. Pros, it's really good sound quality for the money it can be compared to i mean pretty much anything else that you pay around that price or a little more for the sound really is good yeah and um, we have videos that we've yeah. done of that and i can even play a few here that give you guys examples of some of the records that we've spun in the past using our lp60 I mean, it's simple to set up. It's it's not super durable in that like it's heavy weight, but it's a workhorse. If you go to pretty much any record store, that's the, at least in our area, and I mean other places we've gone across the country, they've had LP60 as the turntable they use for testing records. So, I mean, you know those get worked and they, they hold up, which is really good. Um, it's really easy to use and it's got that automatic start and return, so you don't have to stay super close to your turntable and that's so convenient <laughs> yeah, it's extremely convenient and it has the built-in anti-skate mechanism yes. so that's preset uh, from the factory for audio technica and so that is one other really nice thing about it is that it mm -hmm. has that um, automatic anti-skate so you don't have to worry about that with your records unlike the lp120 that uh, I will go into that with another video. Yeah. We we do have some issues with the anti-skate <laughs> not working properly on our LP120, and that's yeah. been the case for a while. Spins a little fast. Spins a little faster than it's supposed to, so it does have a pitch problem. We didn't know this when we first purchased it. We thought that it was 
basically that it sounded the way it was supposed to, mm-hmm. but we listened to a couple albums. They did sound a little bit different than some of the CDs that we've had. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I can certainly say that, you know, that's that's a problem for a lot of people. It, yeah. And, I mean, it, it didn't bother us that bad. It was a little annoying when we finally found out, but we dealt with that for a while and just kept listening to records. Yeah. I have given demonstrations of this before, and I will do it again. The tracking force on the LP60 increases quite a bit. So you start, or at least we had three grams as a starting mm-hmm. point on our turntable, and I have pictures for that as well. So the starting point for us was three grams, and that was, we set it on the platter, um, and then we took the measurement with our Neotech scale, and then over time, not even a year had went by no. uh, when, we, when we finally looked at it and it was increasing even more. And then we had it a little bit longer, and then for this test, I did another uh, you know, test on the weight, and it went all the way up to 4.24 at that point, which was awful. That's a yeah. significant increase within that time frame, and we we hadn't even been using this turntable for a while. So, oh, I mean, it's right. it's not something that should have even increased that much. Those numbers are too much. I mean, both times yeah. when I measured it, it doesn't matter if the scale is placed on a different level because when I did it both times, I did it on the same surface and it was the same height because of the Audio-Technica slip mat and the platter, doing it on the LP60 in the same location mm-hmm you're gonna have the same height, same everything else. Those numbers should not have increased as much as they did, and that's the bottom line. It's not, if you put it somewhere else, is it going to make a difference? That's not going to matter in this particular instance because it was measured on the exact same surface. So the numbers increasing as much as they did does indicate a technical problem with that turntable. And this is something that I've checked on other turntables that my friends have owned, and the same with theirs. Their their tracking force was even higher than ours was when I finally mm-hmm. looked at it. And so, I mean, there is a significant problem with the tracking force and the LP60. And even though Audio Technica is very good in terms of like customer service, we got in touch with them and they weren't able to pay for the shipping costs for us to send it back. They would they would look at it without charging us but we had had it too long at that point, and so it was going to cost me a little over $50, regardless if I went through USPS, FedEx, or UPS, any of those are not going to uh, go below $50 for my shipping of the turntable uh, back to Audio-Technica. So I chose not to do it, and that was even after I removed the dust cover and the platter uh, out of the turntable, tried to ship it back to Audio-Technica, but I, wasn't going to, I wasn't going to pay half the amount of what the turntable cost to not even yeah. get a guaranteed resolution out of the whole situation. Because Audio Technica said, you know, if we can't fix it, then there's nothing we can do for you. Yeah. So unfortunately, yeah. Audio Technica did not help me in that instance, and that was very disappointing. But we accepted and moved on. We had the LP120, which proved to be a significant increase, which was a much better turntable but there are more problems with that turn turntable and I will go into that in another video to come and uh, but yeah there there's just because of the tracking force increase because of the um, pitch issues because of the fact that it's it's just not built to be a turntable that you would really want to use long term I mean yeah. if you have a substantial collection of records and you're always rotating from a different album then yes, your records are obviously going to last a little bit longer, Mm -hmm. but no one should have to worry about that or be concerned about how their records are holding up. Everything should remain, you should be comfortable. Everything should remain fine. You shouldn't have to worry about anything wearing down your records faster. And unfortunately, 
uh, further confirmation about the fact that the LP60 does in fact destroy the records uh, is it our Survive album is the one that took probably the most damage yeah. because we listened to it the most. It's all the, yeah. And we may <laughs> have to replace one of our Survive records because when we listen to it now, it sounds staticky, it, it pops. skips, it pops, it's, it's not good. Yeah. And we, we've never spun it on any other turntable, we bought it brand new, and it sounded great in the beginning, mm -hmm. but now it doesn't. And that, again, like I said, that's, that's further confirmation about the weight of the LP60 over time just wearing down records, and we certainly didn't listen to it a hundred times. No. So that's, again, you know, that just kind of goes to show that the LP60 is mm -hmm. not as great as we thought it was. It's not a turntable that's going to work for us. Yep. But it may work for other people, and that's that's good. I mean, it's yeah. it's still substantially better oh, than yeah. the Crosley, <laughs> like the all-in-one Crosley record players that you see in the suitcase, any other suitcase record players. Yeah, yeah. Um, better than any Jensen, better than any of the Ion um, turntables out there. Those things are just, uh, those things are a death trap for your LPs. So, um I would definitely would not recommend those. The LP60 is at least a little bit better than those turntables. The only thing is, I don't know, um, I still I still wouldn't really recommend it at this point to no. anyone. Save your money, buy something better used. Yeah, if you if you can save your money, you know, consider doing that for the long term because your LPs are your first priority. Yeah. Always your first priority, and unfortunately. Um, one or two of our LPs may need to be replaced. That kind of sums up a lot of the concerns that we've had with the LP60, and uh, we can't really, at this point, um, you it's know, no recommendation. Yes, yeah, it's or not our like recommendation that. at this point. But hopefully, people understand that when we make these kind of videos, we're trying to help people in the vinyl community. Yeah. We're not trying to just pick on the LP60 because we purchased the LP60. Yeah. We we owned it. We enjoyed so, it. Yeah, we enjoyed it. So we, we purchased it. We used it. Um, it just comes down to it wasn't what we thought it was going to be. And what we needed. And what we needed, yeah. And with the type of records that we have been acquiring over a long stretch of time, some of those have been sitting for a long time and we wanted to wait until we had a better turntable. Um, and, you know, we we can't afford to have any of those wear down sooner. We need something really robust that's going to take care of our records yeah. long term. And just as we will continue to clean them and take care of them long term, uh, we can rely on the technology that we have now with uh, some of our latest turntables. Yeah. Not the LP120, even mm -hmm. though it's better than the LP60. Yeah. Uh, the LP120 is a substantial upgrade from the LP60 for sure. Uh, so we definitely respect the LP120 more but mm -hmm. there's still problems with that one as well, which again, another I would, video. <laughs> that's another video. That's another video coming up. So, uh, did you have any other thoughts about the LP60 or any other last last words for the LP60 before so. we bid for farewell permanently to it? I mean, you're not saving money if you have to repurchase your favorite records. Yeah. It just you're not. <laughs> yeah. And uh, at this point. I mean, I can certainly say, uh, even with as, as good as it seemed in the beginning, uh, it's not worth it. And it's, it's definitely not worth it to us. Yeah. So uh, we hope that that is helpful to everyone watching this video. Um, we hope that in time, Audio-Technica will be able to uh, perfect yeah, and, and fix some of the problems that they have with their turntables and, and better those yeah. uh, situations. You know, I mean, there's... there's things that really need to be fixed with these turntables and uh, this is something that people should know about so um, we hope you guys have enjoyed the video yeah. we hope that it was helpful uh, as always you know please comment below um, but let's keep the comments you know respectful and and professional above all professional and anything else you know let, we're, we're more than happy to help and answer questions but we want for people to uh, be respectful to one another on our videos and we uh, we're more than happy to, to help you guys and answer any other questions that you might have. So uh, until next time, this has been Chad and Claire. We'll see you guys on the flip side.